Hello, Alan. Yes. Congratulations yes. on uh, Strange Magic. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the character, the Bog King. When I was watching this film, it is aimed at ages, I guess, from young to old, but there will be a lot of children in the theater, I would imagine, watching this film. Was there an attempt by you, or did you think about this, to temper the performance, to balance the performance between some of the elements that might be scary for little kids, or do you think that little kids can handle a bit more darkness than maybe uh, adults sometimes give them credit for? Um. I do think the kids are, I think we perhaps um, underestimate how much um, darkness or, yeah, darkness kids can deal with. I mean, I think these, all the kind of, these kind of films are based on a tradition that goes way, way back, you know, the, the Grimm's brothers, their tales, all these tales are actually very, very dark, and there's usually always a mother figure missing, so the, the most basic thing that a child understands is taken away from them in these stories. So I think that's actually what makes them so unsettling for kids. And, and in a way, the reason where the reason those stories are told uh, is to sort of teach kids some sort of you know moral lesson. So I do think we misunder uh, misunderestimate them. But I didn't try to do. I mean, the thing is, you know, you have a, there's a lot of people um, guiding you and um, turning the volume up and down on what yeah. you're uh, doing. So I didn't. I, I, I sort of did what I was told really but also like i think a character like this the, you know a lot of it's bluster so you've got to like scare people but also give them an idea that ultimately he's not he's gonna you know he's gonna you're gonna see a, a nicer side to him well he's both i think fearsome and a little bit silly and i think that's maybe the 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 balance that makes some of the classic disney uh characters um you know palatable for kids and i think the the bog king he looks like a giant cockroach i guess kind of uh but he's he's uh he's fearsome by times there's the close ups of the eyes and everything but then he is silly or reveals vulnerability i guess which makes him uh so appealing yeah i know so he um Surrounds himself with incompetent people. Right. So that's he's obviously not that much of a of a fascist. <laughs> now, did you uh, know what the character was going to look like while you were doing the uh, animation, yeah. the, the voice, or does it? I, I don't know how that works. Now, usually, what happens is you get usually you at the very start of the process, at least there's some sort of illustration you can look at mm -hmm. to um, get an idea. So yeah, you get there's there's a, there's a a visual, and then you talk with the director and throw some ideas around, you know, to, of where, where you're going to go with the voice. And then as the process goes on over the years, there are some animated passages, and then, you know, then you hear other people's voices. It, it kind of, it's kind of an evolving process that goes towards uh, the finished product, and actually the more that you, that you work on it, the more it kind of... Um, you get more kind of stimulus and more uh, inspiration. And do you find yourself, once you've seen a little bit more, and once you say you get a little bit more uh, stimulation from it, uh, do you think to yourself, or do you do this, do you go back and say, you know what, I want to do the first act again. I want to do the first part again, because I have a different you, idea. You don't you need to, I mean, you don't need to want that, because that happens, that's part yeah. of the whole process. You, you, you go back and, you know, there's like a thousand people uh, see it and improve it and do things and have suggestions and also just you I think part of the whole understanding of doing a film like this is not like you do a scene that's just finished and, you, and then you come back and shoot another one or record another one it's it's you're constantly revisiting things are being rewritten and the animation comes back there's lots of changes have to be made accordingly because you know that's a whole new element so it's 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 it's, it's, it's kind of you, you keep it's not like a kind of a it's not it doesn't have a linear process mm -hmm. It's constantly going back on yourself and refining things, and I, I, I really like that. Is it more like theater than working in a live-action film in the sense that, you know, when you're doing a show that might run like you're doing right now, which is run for more than a year, uh, and things change? You know, over the time, you discover things, you find things, and so night by night, the, the, the character or the, the performance gets altered a little bit, I, I would imagine. Is it more attuned to that? Not really, because you know, you do maybe some years you only do like three days on it. Right. So it's it, it, it's uh, the the gaps between when you perform it are so huge that you're actually coming back to it with some familiarity, but not often, not that much, because you might have recorded a song 
in a couple of hours that you'd never known before and you never hear again and, and then you know six months go by and you've got to go back and sing again it's kind of weird it's a very um, it's a very idiosyncratic process of doing a film like this um, and the one that I actually that, that, on this one I really enjoyed it the length of time although I thought it might never come out <laughs> I actually really enjoyed the fact that they had just took their time with it and got it right well, the thing I was amazed by about this film is I this was only recently on my radar, Strange Magic, mm -hmm. and it has taken years of work. Uh, I've heard that people have been working on this for at least four years. It sounds mm -hmm. like your process was years and years in the making. Yeah, but four, I think, yeah. And how is it that they're able to keep something like this under wraps uh, completely? I mean, it's got a, a, a big-time voice cast. George Lucas is involved. How didn't we hear about this? I don't know. It's kind of heartening that you didn't. I mean, <laughs> yeah. part, part, partly because it was called something else when we were, and it was and until only recently it was called Strange Magic. It was right. actually called uh, Primrose, right? All the time I think. And also, I mean, you were kind of sworn to secrecy. You had to sign a confidentiality clause, and it was very hush hush. And I would like, you know, I'd, I'd suddenly be going to LA, and my friends would, I'd see friends who go, "What are you doing here? Why? What, what brings you to LA?" I go, "I'm working on a top secret George Lucas project." <laughs> <laughs> and they go, what is it? I go, I can't see it's top secret. <laughs> and also, for a lot of the time, you know, the, the early on, I didn't even know the proper story, so I couldn't have told it. Right. And then, and then, you know, later, it's kind of complicated, so you just kind of, um, I don't know, I just, I just let it kind of uh, become one of my, it was a quite nice having a secret. Well, it, it's interesting, because I just think over the last uh, number of years, um, I have seen you do Hamlet on no, stage. Uh, Macbeth, I'm sorry, Macbeth, Macbeth. I, I saw you do Macbeth. I saw, uh, I've seen Cabaret a couple of times. Um, uh, the the book is out. This movie you've been working on, the television show. I mean, when do you have a moment to, um, to yourself, or do you not? Is that just more what you, more of what you enjoy, the way of life? Um, no, I do. I mean, I don't have many moments right now. This has been a bit of an overload. It's been, it's not been. I mean, I've been having fun, but it's, it's been a lot, and yeah. just. Uh, kind of circumstances dictated that, you know, I literally only had, I had a day off on Monday after the Golden Globes, and that was my first day that wasn't like New Year's Eve, New Year's Day or Christmas Day since September the 22nd. Wow. So I need to um, make that not happen again, but, so I've, I've but you know, now it's, now I'm going back to, onto the Good Wife on Monday, and at least my book stuff's calmed down for a bit. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a very hectic time, but I, I've been in, really enjoying stuff. And I actually do, part of my, what I do is, you know, I still am able to have fun. I have my club coming in my dressing room. I actually relax and have fun with friends there. And, you know, I, it's not ideal. I would love to have more days just to do nothing. But I think it's also important when you are really busy to make sure you have in your day some hours aside just for revelry. Right. 